Welcome to DrivenMavens.com. My name is Arvind, and we are going to start with uh, discussing some detailing. So uh, let's go. So what I've got here is a uh, sketch that I had done previously. It's like a toy car. Uh, pretty exaggerated, as you can see in the background. That's the other reason why you want to use overlays is that you can start with um, some preliminary work and then go and refine that uh, using your uh, underlay or using the previous sketch as an underlay and then sketching on top of it. What I'm using right now is just a, uh, a software called Painter. Uh, which is all digital, allows me to uh, get some pressure sensitivity when I'm sketching, which is pretty handy. So sometimes if I don't have uh, my Wacom tablet, I've actually got this terrific tool that I had purchased. It's like a tablet PC. This particular uh, tablet PC that I'm using is a Fujitsu. It's a life book. Uh, and uh, it's got, uh, it's Wacom pen enabled, so you can draw it directly on the screen. And I think uh, the real advantage of it is really to be able to have the computer with you instead of uh, Cintiq. You, with a Cintiq, you still need to have an operating system and connect it to your uh, main computer to be able to use it. But this one is totally portable, so it's, it's really, really cool to have. So anyway, um, <clears throat> if you are just starting out, uh, I would still recommend uh, going with just pencil and paper. In fact, that's how everyone starts. Uh, the digital tools are, are just that. They're just a tool for, uh, for you to uh, you know, explore. And for me, it's just, for me, it's, it's just easier for me to uh, keep track and digitally capture uh, the video. So anyway, what I'm doing right now is I'm just identifying uh, the, uh, the grill pattern here. And, you know, this is real time. You don't have to uh, try to rush and, and hurry through your sketches because at the beginning, part of the thing that you're going to end up doing is, is really trying to understand, you know, what's your, your grill. If you're drawing a grill, what's the, the grill shape going to be? And, and then how do you translate that into perspective? Another problem that I see already with uh, this drawing uh, as I go through this is the width. Uh, my width I didn't really pay attention uh, as I started to work on this. Uh, it's something I should have corrected uh, before. That's another thing, it's a, it's a good thing for overlays but uh, <laughs> maybe I'll make that into another video <laughs> because this width of the vehicle is way too thin and it needs to be widened a little bit. But that's okay, that's not the that's not what uh, I'm going through here. The main exercise is just to kind of look at detailing and what we're doing now is detailing the, the grill and trying to understand uh, the shape that's around it. So here I'm just going to increase the line weight and then we're just going to block that whole area in. We want to make sure that there is enough value uh, in this area to be able to pop the shapes, the positive and the negative shapes out. I, what you're going to find as you, it, it doesn't matter whether you're really drawing cars or trains or, or anything that's uh, different. And what you're going to find is that uh, with drawing in general, you're going to be utilizing the same kind of principles, uh, whether it's in uh, art or whether it's in the product. And what I mean by that is, you know, obviously the product for, you know, the difference between art and design. Product design is because you're, you're using a consumer, you know, it's a product that needs to be mass produced. And it's a, uh, a product that has, that's going to be subject to manufacturing and engineering. Uh, art, however, is uh, very emotional. It is really completely up to the uh, the artist and his interpretation and what it is they want the audience to see and there are no limits there are no bounds uh, because what you feel uh, about a particular uh, art piece and what you want to convey is up to you and nobody can really tell you anything different there are no constraints but that said 
when you start looking at graphic design and graphical elements, uh, this is what we're trying to create. When you look at large portions of a car, uh, especially for the grill, when you look at Audi, look at BMW, they all become a very graphical element. So the essentially what they do is it starts to break up the surfaces and the forms and the overall forms. And how you break those surfaces up is what's going to be key. Can you break up the forms in a way or in, an, or in a particular pattern that is pleasing to the eye or it at least sparks a little bit of visual interest for you? So uh, that's done by sculpting. That's done by uh, carefully sculpting surfaces that seem to relate to one another and make sense. And that's not easy to do. Uh, that takes a lot of reflection and uh, understanding of one key understanding of forms and uh, reflecting upon it. So once you've done the forms, does it relate? Does it uh, does it look right? And then you got to understand well, what does it mean for something to look right? Uh, and that just takes a lot of experience. And that's what you're going to get in design school. You're going to if you go to a very good private school. That's what you're trained to do. I mean, you're not. Uh, these design schools, they're not about, you don't get a, a very holistic uh, viewpoint or education. You are trained in the arts and you're trained in the, um, uh, you're trained to, to draw and you're trained to solve problems and design. So first and foremost, you're going to find that it's a, it's a big difference when you don't have to take math classes or uh, social sciences and things like that. Everything is going to be more uh, art related, design and art related. So there's a reason for that and, and that reason is to make sure that they convert you into a machine provided that you have the raw talent. Anyway, uh, just I guess I keep rambling on but hopefully that uh, some of that stuff is making sense. All right, so now I'm just adding value and uh, darkening up uh, some of the lines. Uh, not a big deal. And, and these are just simple exercises that you can do. Uh, yeah, you know, every other day, try to try to put in a schedule for yourself and try to figure out how much do you want to commit. And you don't have to draw the whole car. All you have to do is just take a particular section. And I think that you're going to find that as you just break things down into sections, they get a little bit easier to comprehend and uh, spend time with than doing the entire vehicle. So let's say you want to look at different uh, elements for the grill, grill pattern, shape, or whatever it is. This one here that I've done is just pretty basic. It's like a Dodge, right? You've got just the other uh, cross. Uh, nothing complicated about it. Nothing uh, inspirational about it. But, you know, just for the sake of, of education, I just want to give you an idea that, you know, you just take a little bit of uh, some of these techniques and integrate them into your process, into your learning process. Okay, now I'm going to darken the headlamps, this area. Add a little bit of shadow there. By adding that shadow, you, it just kind of picks up that uh, there's a little bit of a relief in that area. Then I'm going to draw some sketch lines. So already you kind of see you got my you know I've got my sections as well that are defining what's what the form is doing in those areas. And if it helps you to look at references, by all means, look at uh, look at references. Make sure you don't limit yourself. There are no, you know, right or wrong uh, rules, I guess. Well, there's you know some fundamental rules and things, but uh, the more references you use, uh, the better off you're going to be. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, particular lesson, and we'll see you next time. DrivenMavens.com. Have a good one.